Hi there. In this short video, we're just going to take a look at some examples of uh, behavioral nudges in action, the ways in which changing the default, changing the choice architecture, changing the incentives uh, of people's decisions can bring about a change in people's behavior. One really good example of this is in Wales, where the country has decided, the government has opted to move to what's called deemed consent for organ donation. So if you live in Wales and you haven't recorded an organ donation decision, opt in or opt out on the NHS <coughs> organ donation register, then you're treated as having no objection to donating any of your organs. So this is called deemed consent and is designed to lift the number of or the supply of organs available for the thousands of people waiting a transplant. In Singapore, to reduce travel volumes at congested peak times, Singapore brought in a number of smart incentives. So for example, you can travel free at early times of the day. So if you avoid the peak times and get in early, you can travel for free. Or if you travel early or non-peak times, your, your card is, uh, is rewarded by being entered into a lottery. Uh, and uh, you can win a dollar, ten dollars, hundred dollars. Uh, in fact, there's a monthly lucky draw prize of fifteen hundred dollars for people to travel off peak. Peak time usage of the MRT system in Singapore is down 7.5% since these smart, in smart initiatives were brought into play. One of the problems in the health service is people being prescribed antibiotics, but after they've had four or five days of treatment, they feel you know a little better and they stop uh, taking their treatments and fail to complete their, their prescription. Uh, well, one of the behavioural approach is to engage in what's called chunking. So chunking is instead of giving a patient 12 orange pills to, to take, you give them four green, four yellow and four blue pills. <coughs> if you do that, then they're much more likely to uh, complete their course of treatment. Here are three more examples of behavioural nudges in action. Oftentimes you can gamify a decision. Uh, in, a, in a famous experiment in Sweden, they, they introduced a speed camera lottery where drivers who were over the speed limit had their number plates registered and the fines they were uh, given were entered into a lottery and drivers who were under the speed limit also had their number plates registered but they were entered into the lottery. A simple nudge to incentivize people to stick to the speed limit. In hospitals, the cost of x-rays is quite high and of course there are risks involved as well. So instead of the automatic default being send somebody for an x-ray when there's a fear of, for example, a broken ankle, a lot of hospitals are now using simple five-point checklists, simple five-point heuristics to reduce the volume of x-rays and therefore reduce delays. In the, in the food industry, uh, behavioural nudge is that if you serve food on a smaller plate, uh, people typically eat less. Uh, that's true, by the way, with drinking. If you serve beer in a smaller glass, they typically drink less as well. And interestingly, if you take the meal tray away from the option, people have to carry a plate but no tray to their table. Again, people tend to take less food from the buffet and that lowers the amount of waste. Here are four more behavioural nudges in action. Getting people to disinfect their hands when they're in the hospital is obviously a major issue, especially with the MRSA. Uh, you can, various ways of doing it. You can have a sign, you can have a reminder. Uh, well, using the aroma of gel actually encourages more regular use. And interestingly, having a video of somebody using the gels just above the sign also increases usage. Getting the NHS to cut the cost of people not turning up to the appointments is a major battle. The NHS now uses uh, text reminders uh, to patients attending NHS and GP surgeries. If you add to that text reminder the estimated cost of an appointment being missed, again, that reduces the non-attenders by up to a quarter. I love the example top right here. I love this uh, Beijing reverse vending machine. I think this is a smart nudge. This is designed to encourage recycling at a particular point in time. So if you're in a Beijing railway station, for example, you're about to buy a ticket, this reverse vending machine allows you to put your 
bottle, empty bottle into the machine and it automatically gives you, let's say, a 50 cents or 50p credit off the price of your railway ticket. It's a nice, smart, timely intervention. And students in Scotland in Dumfries and Galloway uh, now pre-order their, their lunchtime foods at all primary schools. A uh, list of healthy options is provided. Parents pre-order the food. And this, of course, is the, is the out of time consistency. But uh, what people prefer now and in a week's time may be very different. So pre-ordering food, healthy food, is a way of, in the sense of imposing a, a commitment that uh, those foods will be provided and consumed. One more slide of uh, some examples of behavioural. <coughs> Here's a, a really good example, top left, about trying to uh, get people to pay their car tax. So instead of just sending a letter to people reminding them that their tax is, is overdue, if you include a picture of the offending vehicle, that triggers an emotional response in people and payment rates rose in this example from 40% to just under a half. Now, we're not saying this is increasing, doubling the payment rates. Uh, a 9% increase is on the surface quite small, but actually, of course, that's many millions of pounds of extra tax revenue. Again, income tax reminders, when people were told in letters that most people pay their tax on time, that increased payment rates. Typically, again, it's just a behavioural trait that when people pay in cash, they tend to make healthier choices. When people pay with credit cards, oftentimes they don't. And I think this is the best example uh, I can see. Of, I think of a really smart change in choice architecture and the friction costs when you make a choice. I think it was just under 20 years ago that uh, uh, the governments in the United States and the UK banned the use of bottles of pills, bottles of painkillers and other, other drugs. Instead, they made it compulsory, they made it mandatory for blister packs to be sold over the counter, for example, for things like uh, flu treatments and uh, paracetamol, what have you, headache pills. You know, the act of opening up a blister pack to get one pill out, actually, the effort needed to do that reduces the risk of self-harm. By some estimates, uh, deaths from paracetamol poisoning fell by more than 40% once blister packs were introduced. So here are some examples of sometimes subtle, sometimes smart, uh, and sometimes effective uh, behavioural nudges in action.